Listen to me. We need to get the drive back online now. Listen to me, Baratna. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Anthony James YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Expanse Season 3. This is the one you've all been telling me to wait for. So Season 3 draws to a close what I imagine is the first chapter of The Expanse story. I think I would assume this one is the end of the third book. Although one can't be sure because we know how they're, they are sort of ending books in between series in this show which is quite interesting. Um, and that's actually a good place to start. This show, it, this series, does the same thing that last series did. After five or six episodes, I can't remember the exact episode number, the first storyline comes to an end. And like The Expanse has done before, they start anew as if it's a new series halfway through. Which, to be honest with you, I'm actually really enjoying that. And I'm really enjoying that because I don't have to wait, like... Oh, well, obviously it's all out so I don't have to wait anyway but imagine if you're waiting every year for this show you don't have to wait the whole year to get the new story story booted up I really like the idea if I was watch if I was watching season three and season two at the time by the time you get to the end of the season yeah you are left with some cliffhangers and yeah you really want to see the next episode but you actually have already had a fulfilling ending within that series. So episode five of season two was a fulfilling ending of that first sort of story arc. And again, in this one, we do the same. In episode, I think it was episode maybe seven, I'm not quite sure, 100%. We get the end of the story arc that started off halfway through season two. So the the where the story is and where the seasons are is a little bit out of sync, which to be honest with you, I really, really didn't mind that. I liked, I, I loved it because I love the idea of starting afresh halfway through the season. Just, I've never really seen any other other show do that before, and it is very, ref, very refreshing and very fresh in my mind, um, which is apparently what refreshing means. Yeah, just double, double, double meanings. There. Anyway, so uh, what what I've got to say? I'm just going to jump, I think, straight into the spoilers because as much as I could sit here and say, great show, love the suspense, love this, love this. Uh, Who's watching an Expanse Season 3 review if they're not already hooked on the show? So I think I'm just going to get straight into the spoilers. Um, and by doing that, I might actually be able to keep this one around 10 minutes. Because <laughs> the other ones have been, whoa, off the deep end long. So, uh, okay, so what did I like about the season? I love the fact that actually, that Prax was able to get back, get his daughter back. I honestly, honest to God, I, honest, I thought that that wasn't going to happen. I, I, I thought that his daughter's going to die, going to turn into one of the uh, protomolecule hybrids. I thought that was definitely going to happen. Um, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised and really happy that that didn't happen and he got his, got his daughter back. Um, it's, I, did, I find it interesting that, uh, that in the first two main stories of The Expanse, the, two, uh, the first one was they were looking for an for a, for a Asian, Asian woman called Julie Mao, Mao, and then the second one was they were looking for May. So, uh, you know, variety. Love it. But anyway, uh, so, so uh, he, got a, he got his daughter back, and I love that. I love that. I love the moment. Now, let me know if you think, in terms of characters, the characters of the show just keep getting better. They keep growing. Um, really strong character work in the show. And I love, Amos is quickly becoming my favorite character. Um, I predicted in my last video that I thought he was going to be like some sort of cyborg or something. I don't actually fully believe that. But I think there might be something to do with him. I know that there was an allusion to him having no empathy. So, you know, or like losing his empathy in a way. So I think there's a, there's definitely allusions to the fact that he might uh, become, that he might learn empathy. Like he's, if they're refer referencing it like Pinocchio, like which is what they made in season two, like I, I, v I view him one day actually getting that empathy, like becoming more human, you know, even if, I know he's already human, but becoming more human in a way. Um, having said that, I'll still hold on to the cyborg thing until I'm proven completely wrong, because then I still get the points. But uh, yeah, so um, I really love the moment whenever uh, Amos basically sent Prax away with the, with the kids because he's saying, you know, you're not you're not that kind of man. Um, I love how Amos, I think pra Prax and Amos's friendship sort of grew a bit of empathy within Amos. 
And I'm interested to see moving forward whether Amos will get other relationships with other characters that will actually continue to blossom that empathy flower, so to speak. So I love the idea that Amos said, "You're not, you're not, uh, you're not that type of person." And then he left, and then they closed the door, and then he turned around and goes, "But I am." And when he shot that guy, I was so happy. So much, so many times in shows, there is. Uh, now, I'm not going to say I don't like this when it happens, but there's, there's so many times shows where you have a bad guy who's done something very bad, very terrible, and then they just sort of get away, or they just say, you're coming into custody, pal. And I know that's the morally right thing to do, but sometimes you got to admit, it's great to see these people just get shot. Like, it's it's great to see them just go, you know what, no, just go away. You're, you're, you've, you've, you've taken these kids, you've literally turned children into hybrids, just kill him. And I, and I, love, I love the fact that this show just went, you know what, Let's, let's just kill him. So I love that. Uh, what also I liked is, I love that we got to see Ava Sarala out of the political realm for a bit. Well, she was in the political realm the whole time, but in space. Um, I didn't expect to be able to see her in these like sort of action-packed space scenes where like uh, they were being cornered in the room. And I, always, I absolutely love that. I love that. And I, I was, to be honest with you, I thought they would eventually cross paths in some way, but I did not believe or did not see it coming that Ava Sarala would get onto the um, the Rosinante, Rosinante. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, I don't know why. That was just wasn't in my mind. I wasn't thinking of that. Um, Bobby Draper becoming like Ava Sarala's bodyguards a little bit like that. That was great. I love that. Like they're all when they go down to the to the moon, uh, Ganymede. When they go down down to Ganymede to, to to like you know take the kids. I love the fact that. Bobby's there in a you know in a armor just throwing people about. I just you know so overpowered. It's it's great. Um, so yeah, Bobby's uh, storyline was really great as well. I love like she went to Earth and um, and had to uh, you know give her account of what happened. I love the pressure that Avasarala was putting on her. She saw the cracks and she was you know uh, going at that. Um, Avasarala seems to be sort of for the most part, a morally righteous, morally good character. But I see moments where she's sort of swaying into the political too much and she's sort of thinking about her position a bit too much. But for the most part, very morally righteous, does the right thing. So I'm interested to see where her character goes in the future. Um, I was it was, I, th- I was really happy to see, talking about characters getting killed whenever they're supposed to be or characters getting their comeuppance, I was really happy to see that Aaron Wright actually did get his uh come up and so to speak they actually got the message out i i love that and and the fact that uh that that uh that happens makes me think that actually does that mean avasarala that's yeah i think i think well at the very end of the series she seemed to be in a more position of power so i think she's sort of taken his spot that's that's what i would assume um which is great and obviously the uh the the, the part of the messages that was that was, that was put out at the end of the series was um or the end of the middle of the series. Oh, no, hang on. Mm, oh, yeah. At the end of the series, there was messages put out uh, to try and stop everyone uh, moving in the in the ring, which we haven't even talked about yet. But um, basically, uh, I love the idea that... Um, I, I, I love the idea of uh, the documentary crew being like a Chekhov's gun. You know, once the documentary crew was there, I just was thinking to myself, well, the fact that there's someone with a camera and they're able to send, you know, that's going to come up later. And it did. So that was interesting. Uh, I love the belt, that how the belters have now got the Navu and um, and the, the behemoth it's called now. And it's just their ship now. That's uh, that's great. I love I love I love the way whenever they're standing drummer when she's standing at the at the table and all around her is all of the. Uh, the mormon art as if they were going to go to paradise and stuff it's just, it's i don't know that tickled me that did tickle me and I, I enjoyed that now i would imagine when everyone was saying to me just wait just wait until you see season three if you think season two is good just wait until season three i would imagine that you're talking about the whole idea of miller being within holden's mind and uh him and sort of the whole ramp up to these rings, and they go through the ring, and uh, and the whole sort of storyline amongst that. I'd imagine that's what you're talking about in terms of how great this season was. And I think I would tend to agree with you. This season definitely brought to fruition things that were laid in the last few seasons. We finally see what the proto-molecule was trying to do. I honestly, hand on heart, thought that the proto-molecule was going to be a destroying... Um, 
it would destroy the universe or destroy the solar system. And I suppose they did allude to that that could have happened um, if, if they didn't comply with it and show that they weren't a threat. Um, in terms of how it's going, in terms of uh, Holden seeing Miller, really interesting. Uh, I wasn't expecting, from the first season of this show, even though they had Eros and even though they had like this proto-molecule that, was, uh, that they didn't really know, it seemed like alien in origin, even though all of that was true, I didn't see them going into the more science fiction elements. I know that sounds absolutely crazy because it is a science fiction show. But in terms of like the actual fiction, alien, people inside your mind, I didn't expect it to go that direction. Having said that, the way they're doing it is really compelling. And I love the idea of Holden going into the middle, the core of the ring and having to put his hand and when he put his hand in there, he got the visions and that like had my mind racing. Like I was thinking, is that the past? Is that the future? Is that something that could happen if they don't, you know, do something? It was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, uh, it wasn't what I was expecting in terms of the proto-molecule. I was expecting them to be a weapon. I was expecting that, that sort of thing. The idea of this sort of thing that's been made, this proto-molecule that's going out into different solar systems and creating gates across the universe. It's, I love that idea. And, and I, I was really, I just, I really, it was, I thought it was cool. You know, that's, that's the thing that this, this show is really, it's really cool. You know, it's, 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 great ideas that I think are very original in my mind. It's not like it's 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 more hard sci-fi than I'm used to watching, which I absolutely love. I've been really wanting to see a show like this and it just keeps getting better. It just keeps getting better. I'm just interested to see where they go where they go from here. Um, is that like the end of the proto molecule, so to speak? Is it just the gate now? Or is there going to be more of the proto molecule? Is that going to continue? Uh, or is there going to be a bigger threat? Is there going to be like a, a new, like now that the gates are open, are they going to be bringing, uh, is, there, is there an alien race going to come through and fight? I don't, th I don't think it's going to turn into that, but um, I'm interested I'm interested to see. The idea of the gold rush of, of all these ships, like you can imagine all the belters are now going to be like, we, there's land, you know, and they're going to go mad through. So I'm interested to see where we go. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, I'm sure the writers are going to put in that there's a, a world that is inhabitable by, by humans. I'm sure they will. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where they go with that. A prediction that I'm going to make, and this might seem a bit crazy, but I'm going to make this prediction. I predict that and there's something in the back of my head that tells me this i predict i think it might be either humans or something else that used to live in our solar system that created the proto molecule like they keep talking about the there was like there were warring factions or whatever of the proto molecule who created the proto molecule i predict well i don't predict <laughs> I predict the saying predict as if I think it's going to happen. I, I, I think it would be interesting if like it, it actually originated from us or from our solar system. And that's why it's like went around the, the, the solar system and like finally the universe, sorry, and finally come back to us. I thought that, I think that'd be really cool. Um, last thing I want to mention, and I'm sure I've missed out a load. So let me know if I have, um, and I might touch on that in my season four review. But last thing I wanted to mention, the name Melba. <laughs> that's just the name made me laugh nearly every time I heard it because, you know, oh, I need to go under, I'm going to go undercover and I need to make up a name. Uh, Melba? <laughs> that just made me laugh, you know. Uh, you know, anyway, let me let me know what you think uh, about the show in general. Um, I really enjoyed it. Did you like it? I think I, I, there's a few people on the channel I know loved it because they've been telling me to review this for a long time. Um, so I think after I finish reviewing season four, if I get a time between season four and season five, I may I maybe am going to make a couple of video essays or a video essay about this uh, this show because it is it's captured my attention that much. I'd like to put some more content out about the expanse. I'll definitely be covering season five when it comes out. I'm interested. I'm interested to see if season five is going to be uh, episode by episode or is this going to be one big dump that we, that we can binge. I'll be interested to see that because I think Amazon Prime has had some success especially with the boys. And there was also a uh, uh, football soccer uh, documentary about Tottenham Hotspur um, came out and that was weekly episodic, uh, they, three a week, but you know what I mean? Uh, and that was actually very successful. Um, I do enjoy binging shows, but I also like every now and then that they give us a show once a week. I, I like having both going, you know? I like the idea of both, but it's, it'd be interesting to see what they do with uh, The Expanse. I think season four was binge worthy and they put it all out one time. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm interested, I'm looking forward to seeing season four. Um, and apart from that, thanks very much for watching. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
subscribe to the podcast uh, and yeah bye listen to me she... listen to me we need to get the drive back online you want the drive back online we need to get the drive back online is that okay we need to get the drive back online Ha, 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 ha.